friends, one of the most common Harley Davidson engines out there today is the twin cam engine. And chances are, if you've never owned a Harley before, and this is going to be your first Harley Davidson, and you're going out and buying a big twin, more than likely you're probably going to be getting a bike that's powered by a twin cam. Now, the twin cam engines, they're really good motors. There's just a few little things about them, little quirks that you want to be aware of before you go out and really invest in one. You really want to make sure you know what you're getting into. Now, a lot of the things that we're going to look at today, these are not like major items that you just absolutely have to do. Sure, you can buy a bike, it's going to run fine for years, but these are things that you really want to keep in the back of your mind. Now, when it comes to twin cams, overall, they're pretty dang good motors. And if you're just riding them, you're just doing your stage one setup, you're generally going to be in a pretty good place. But if you're going to keep these bikes for a long time and you really want to avoid some problems later on down the road and these things as the miles pile on, they will start to rear their ugly head. Now for one, we know the twin cam engines run hot. That's a very basic common thing with those twin cam engines. Now especially on 2007 and newer, they also have the 6-speed transmission. Now the 6-speed transmission got a lot of flack because they did have some issues when they first came out and even throughout their lifespan of their manufacturer, there were still problems with that six-speed transmission, and I'm gonna show you guys what, really, what I believe has caused those issues. That's definitely one thing you're gonna to wanna to look at. Now, the number one thing with a twin cam engine, the first thing you're really gonna to wanna to do on these bikes is do something to reduce the heat on these bikes. Even if you want quiet exhaust on your motorcycle, you're gonna to wanna to tune it. You definitely wanna put a tuner on it. If you don't do anything else to these motorcycles, go out and get you a Power Vision or a Fuel Pack 3 and put a good tune in it. Basically an improved stock tune, or if you have an air cleaner on it, do the tune for a high flow air cleaner and with the stock setup with the stock exhaust. This right there, that will help bring the heat down in those bikes tremendously. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So yeah, I'm probably going to go, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm just going to say getting a tune is mandatory, even on a stock bike. Stock motorcycles benefit from a tune tremendously. You put more fuel in the bike, and it really helps to cool them down. Now, the second part on the twin cam, definitely something you want to consider if you don't buy a touring bike that already has a factory oil cooler on it, definitely consider getting an oil cooler. Oil coolers are probably one of the best things you could do for a twin cam motor. These engines were basically running like way too lean. They were extremely lean from the factory. The twin cam engine was adapted to run lean. It wasn't exactly designed to run lean at the EPA requirements at 14.7 to one. So now if you got more fuel in the bike and you've got that oil cooler on there and there's several different styles of oil coolers, you can put a basic one on there that's going to flow air through it when you're running down the road, or you can take it a step further and do the fan assisted one, which will actually, it's thermostatically controlled, it'll kick a fan on, it'll pull that fan through it just like it was a water cooled bike. Because basically what you're doing is you're putting a radiator for your oil on your motorcycle. This will help reduce the temperatures on your twin cam engine. And what's great about this is it makes for a more comfortable ride. It makes your oil actually last longer so your oil's not quite as wore out when it comes time to change it, which means better protection for the engine. And it's also going to increase the longevity of the motorcycle. Now those are the absolute basics that you really want to do to any twin cam motorcycle. But I mentioned that six speed transmission and how there was a lot of issues with that with seal failure, bearing failure. Well, here's the kicker. I don't really believe it was the six-speed transmission itself. There's something else going on in there that was causing the issues with it. Now, when Harley-Davidson went to the pressed cranks and the 2003 models, there was automatically all kinds of slop in these engines. Run out in the manual on these things is up to 12 thousandths, which is just absolutely ridiculous. At 12 thousandths run out on the crank, that thing is wobbling around in there, and if it's up at 12 thousandths, you're definitely going to feel it. Even though Harley-Davidson says it's okay, that's not okay. But the funny thing about that run out is that slop was in the 2003 to 2006 models with the 88 inch motor in it. But the 88 inch motor, there was one difference there. It had an manual primary chain adjuster. That right there allowed you to set your primary chain tension and you didn't even have to worry about it. 
Now, 2007 rolls around with the 96. They went to an automatic primary chain tensioner. Now, what these things do is they automatically ratchet up. The problem with them is, is that they don't allow for the tight and the loose spots within the chain itself. So, as you all may know, when you adjust a primary chain, you adjust it at the tightest point. So that way, at that tightest point, it still has enough slack in it, so you're not over tightening it. Now what happens with the automatic primary chain tensioner is this thing doesn't allow for that tight spot in the chain. So basically what happens over time is it starts ratcheting up in the loose spots in the chain, which makes the tight spot ridiculously tight, and at that point something's got to give. You've got a crank in there that's got ridiculous amount of run out in it, a lot of slop, and you got to think, with that chain, you're pulling, you're basically pulling your compensator and your transmission, your clutch, you're pulling all this together. And what's happening is you're pulling on those two shafts, your transmission shaft and your crank shaft. You're pulling that together, and what's going to happen? Something's got to give. What gives? The bearings, the seals in the transmission. Not to mention, you're also creating more slop in that crank shaft within the engine. So when you go to check run out on that thing, holy crap, I'm at eight, nine thousandths, which is absolutely ridiculous. And when you get up that high, chances are you're probably gonna start feeling some little odd vibration within the engine. Now, the other little quirk about the twin cam engine was in from about 2007 to roughly about 2009, 2010, they did not have a very good compensator in there. Now, eventually what Harley Davidson did do was they got rid of the OEM part number and they took the Screamin' Eagle compensator and that actually became the OEM part number. But if you don't want to go with a compensator, there's a lot of ramps, there's a lot of springs, they're kind of a complicated little mess in there. So if you have your primary apart and you want to go ahead and put in a manual primary chain tensioner, this is a great opportunity for you to go ahead and pull that, pull that whole primary down and go ahead and replace the compensator with a compensator eliminator. Now there's a lot of different styles out there. There's just straight up sprockets in there, or the one that I really personally prefer is the Dark Horse. The Dark Horse Man of War Compensator Eliminator. This has basically a rubber cush drive in it, so you still get a little cushion in there, just like you would how your rear wheel has rubber dampeners in it. You've got the same thing up there in your primary. And now here's the other good part about going ahead and changing out that to a compensator eliminator. This is an opportunity to, for you to play with your gearing a little bit if you want to. You can go up or down a couple of teeth with your compensator eliminator. You want a little bit more on top on a little lower RPM, you're going to give up a little bit on bottom, but if you're running down on the highway on six gear, you're going to pull lower RPMs. Now I know what you might be thinking now. You might be thinking, well, now I'm going to have to adjust the, the primary chain. That's going to have to happen. Well, here's the thing about that. You only have to do it every 10,000 miles. And what do you have to do every 10,000 miles? Generally, you gotta change your primary fluid. So it's really not a huge deal if you have to pull the entire primary cover to change that fluid, because you're gonna dump it all out anyhow, check your primary chain tension, put it all back on, fresh gasket, and fill it back up. Now with a 2007 or newer, you do have some options there. You can get a aftermarket primary cover that actually has an inspection window to where you don't have to pull that primary cover off to adjust the chain. You got the inspection window, open it up, no problem. Get in there, make your adjustments, put that back on. It's basically just like a Sportster. And the funny thing is, the Evos, the 88s had it, and then they eliminated it when they went to 2007 with the automatic primary chain tensioner because technically you didn't need it if it's gonna automatically adjust the chain. The problem is it over tightens it. Now, if you're really wanting to get down to the nitty gritty on a twin cam engine, and you want to get into the cam chest, that is probably my favorite part of the motorcycle. Now, the factory cam support plate on the twin cam motors, these are just mass produced cast pieces. These aren't cut from basically a chunk of aluminum, basically CNC machine, like a lot of the aftermarket ones are. Now, it really is a tightrope going with an aftermarket cam plate and an aftermarket oil pump, because generally the clearances on those race plates and race pumps, they're really tight. They are very dependent on you having a low runout number within your crankshaft. But as we know, that's generally not always the case. The cam plate that I really like for a stock replacement on a twin cam engine is Fueling's OE Plus. This is an excellent cam plate. It's a lot stronger than the stock one, but here's the kicker. 
it has looser tolerances which compensate basically for the run out in the crankshaft. This cam plated oil pump was actually designed to deal with that slop in the engine while giving you better support for your camshafts and also allowing you to install a good high volume oil pump. And not to mention, this goes back to the whole heat thing, if you have an oil cooler, a tuner, and a good high volume oil pump, you're moving more oil through the engine at a better rate, better pace, which will also help cool it down and keep it cooler, which in turn lowers the temperatures on the motorcycle, which gives you a more comfortable ride and better engine longevity. Now, of course, if you're gonna be in there to do a cam plate, you might wanna go ahead and decide on a good set of cams. It makes absolutely no sense to tear that down, to change out to a good cam plate without going back with a, with a good high performance set of cams. That would just be crazy not to do that while you're in there. But anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But guys, until next week, please stay safe on the streets, dodge those cars, ride smart, stay safe, and I'll see you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.